Good evening, Janesworld. Aaron Biley coming to you from Sydney, Australia. Just want to make sure all you guys can hear me. We've got a great turnout on the line tonight. This is our third webinar in three nights. So we're touching different people, you know, people looking at Jeunesse for the first time, people that have been involved for only a few days and a few weeks. And uh, now, you know, J School getting started with Jeunesse. On Sunday night, we had a special VIP get together um, of a special interview with a full-time network marketer to answer the questions on how to be successful in network marketing over the long term. And now we have J School. This is our very first ever online J School webinar. And the reason I wanted to hold this is because we have so many new people joining Jeunesse at the moment. It is getting out of control. It's a great problem to have. You know, across the globe, some days we've had 2,000 people joining the Jeunesse Global Business Opportunity, which is absolutely incredible growth. Now, we run a J School once a month in Adelaide, once a month uh, in Sydney, once a month or so in Melbourne, and once a month in other states. But, you know, with people coming on every single day, I just felt that the J Schools were getting too far and few between. Certain people couldn't make those live events. Plus, we have people internationally and regionally on the webinar tonight and so I just felt it was good timing to get this J school out because guys what we're going to go through here is network marketing gravity if you do not do these 15 points you will not be successful in network marketing period no matter what company you're in no matter what time you get started you need to get these network marketing tips done these 15 points succeeded. So if you're very new to Jeunesse, make sure you've got a pen and paper and you're taking lots of notes. Okay, these are the 15 points you want to master and complete inside the next 30 days. If you've been in the business maybe a month or two or three months or even a year, this is a really good opportunity for you to make sure that you can regurgitate this information to your new people, but also too for you to see where you're at in the Jeunesse business. Treat it like a little bit of an exam or a test. So write down 1 to 15 on a bit of paper, and I want you to put a bit of a tick or a cross next to each point. Yes, I've done number one. Yes, I've done number two. Yes, I've done number three. Oops, I haven't done number four. Cross that off and make sure you get that done as soon as possible. So for the new people, you're going to get a lot out of this. For the people that have been in Jeunesse for a while, you can get something out of this. And for people that have been in for a long time that are leaders, do you know every single one of these points you can regurgitate and teach to your team? So really the purpose of J School is to teach the basic proven principles over decades of this industry, to give you a structure and a plan, to give you a structure to be able to teach your new people as they come into the business and make it duplicatable. Because what you don't want is people reinventing the wheel with things that don't work and then people try and duplicate that. You will not have a long-term residual business doing that to help you assess if you have what it takes. Because most people fail to reach the levels of sapphire and ruby and beyond because although they have good intention they have no plan they have no structure to make their aspirations a reality network marketing is such a simple business model but it's not easy so it's really good to be able to simplify it and just regurgitate these 15 points over and over and over and over again uh, and get creative after that. So once you've done all of these 15 points, you can get creative with internet marketing, different marketing strategies. Once you've mastered all these, become a sapphire, start thinking outside the square. You know, you don't want to think inside the square too long because you're restricted by four walls. So you want to get outside of that square, continue to build your network marketing business. You can see there that I've got a 16 point uh, at the end, which is not really an extra thing you need to do, but more of a summary um, of how to remember all these things really quickly. And we're actually going to go through the full thing tonight. So you guys have got the full roadmap to Ruby and beyond. These four things here in the red, you want to be aiming to do, if you haven't done already, you want to be aiming to do them within the next 48 hours. So when I get my new people started, 
I make sure straight away they understand what network marketing is all about and what their day-to-day activities will be required to do. I make sure they've written down their goals and tell me what they are so I know how to work with them. I make sure they know how much time they can invest into the Jeunesse business and they write that down so they have certain Jeunesse time every single day, whether that be one hour a day or 10 hours a day, that doesn't matter, and start writing down you know, your hit list of, of people that you can think of into the business. You know, And it's also good to have an accountability partner. I like to be able to create you know, your accountability partner, whether that's going to be you know, your life partner, someone in your team. Uh, maybe your upline, someone that can keep you accountable because really as simple as the business is, it's like going to the gym by yourself. You will always take the easy option out, finish 10 minutes early. If you've got a personal trainer, you've got no choice. You have to be accountable to them. So accountability partner in business, in any business, is important, especially here in network marketing and Jeunesse. So they're your first 48 hours. The rest of these things can be done over 30 days. So pen and paper, take notes, let's get moving. The first step, number one, it's really important to understand what is my job description. Okay, don't get this confused with the elevator pitch uh, or your story or your script. This is different. So this is understanding what you do. It's not the answer that you give to people when they say, what do you do? It's just so you can understand what your job description is. And really, you're an information broker you know, who is passionately believes that they have information to share that can change people's lives, both physically and financially. So you've got to believe in the people that you're working with, believe in the company, believe in the industry, and believe in the products, but most importantly, believe in yourself as well. I reckon I believe in 99% of everyone in Jeunesse more than they believe in themselves. You know, I can see what they're capable of, but sometimes their their own restrictions upstairs in their head you know, stop them from the greatness that they can go and achieve. So some people need a bit of a kick and a bit of a push. Some people you just need to train um, slowly, slowly. But really, this is what I love to tell people on day one because you are not here to sell. You are not here to convince anyone. Okay, we're just here to provide information. Okay, so through sharing this information, I am in turn creating a vehicle to achieve my dreams and create financial freedom. Think about it like this. Every single person you present the Jeunesse opportunity to, you have just made $500. Now, if I guaranteed you $500 for every presentation you did, I guarantee you everyone on this call would quadruple the amount of presentations you're doing really, really quickly. And that's the thing with this business. If you can think like that, you will be successful. The reason I say that is because we did a survey in my previous company of one of the top income earners that had spent three years going from zero to a million dollars a year. So he did it really quickly. But what he worked out was for every single presentation that he did, whether the person said yes or no, he made $500. So he worked out his total income per month at the end of the three years, you know, which is around about $100,000 a month. He then went back through his diary and worked out every single presentation that he'd ever done over those three years, divided it by the months, divided it by the meetings, and worked out that he made on average $500 per presentation, whether somebody said yes or no. So if you think about it like that, you're just turning up, providing information to people, and whether they see something in it or not, that's totally up to them. Okay, we're not here to convince them or sell to them. And I think that takes the pressure off people because when I first started, you know, I I wanted every single person to enroll. You know, if someone didn't enroll, I couldn't believe that they didn't see what I saw. And I felt like I let myself down, but also let them down. Maybe I could have presented that better because they really need to see what I see. And then if someone joined but then quit, Again, I felt like I'd let them down. Maybe I hadn't trained them properly. The fact of the matter is, guys, take the pressure off yourself. You cannot motivate people. You cannot push people to do this. You cannot pull people to do this. They've got to see the vision in Jeunesse just like you did. They've got to have the self-motivation. They've got to have a big enough why to continue on to build the business. Your sole job is just to provide the information to them. The better you can do that, the more chance they have of jumping in to what you're doing. We're going to run through, you know, the 15 points, better ways to provide that information. So you're not here to sell. You're not here to convince. You're just here to provide information to people face-to-face, on the phone, through webinars, through live events. And if they see something within that information, 
then that is fantastic. So that is all your job description is. Okay, number two, goals. Extremely important. Now, when I first got started in network marketing, one of my mentors showed me all this sort of stuff and, you know, I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew everything about business. I'd been successful in business. I'd written down goals ever since I started, you know, playing serious grade football and all these sorts of things. But, you know, when I really sat down, I hadn't written any network marketing goals. Um, I had goals and a vision for how my millionaire lifestyle looked. So I had an end goal in mind, but it was all in my head. And so I started studying goal setting. And I tell you what, the difference between writing down your goals and not writing down your goals is the difference between the destination that you will get to and a fantasy. Because a goal that's not written down is really just a pipe dream. It's really just a fantasy. You know, as soon as you write them down, they become real. Your subconscious starts kicking into gear to create that vision for you. And that's why things like vision boards are fantastic. So in my house, in my office right now, what I'm looking at is my huge 12 monthly planner. I've got my whole year planned out day by day, sitting right in front of me. If someone asks me where I am on a certain day, I can tell you where I am. Above that, I've got a vision board and I've got, what do we got there? We've got red Ferraris. I've got a beautiful house on the Noosa River. Oh, I've got a fantastic boat over there on the left, a jet ski. Oh, I've got three jet skis. Fantastic. I've got a house with a pool and house with a tennis court. I've got a tropical beach location. So my vision board sits right above that. The importance of a vision board is that whatever your eyes see every day goes into your subconscious. Whether you know you've seen something or not, your subconscious picks it up and it stores what it thinks important. So your subconscious starts to bring about the things that it sees most often. Vision boards can be really subconsciously powerful. Make sure you've done your vision board. Cut out the things that you want to create around your life. I then have my 2013 goals pinned up on one sheet. I have a blackboard of things that I need to do right now Today, tomorrow, this month, things that I need to achieve right now, 2013 goals, a five-year plan, and how my long-term lifestyle looks. So they are all written down. But I've taken it to a whole new level. You know, I make sure that I read my goals out loud every single day. Now, I don't read them out like this. If you say uh, one of your goals is to be a millionaire, okay, that's just too broad, okay? You need to make sure you've got a time frame for that. So, you know, I want to be a millionaire by the end of 2014. The way that I'm going to get to a millionaire status is step by step and you write down the step by step. But when you're reading the goal out loud, how you want to word it is like this. You want to say, I am a millionaire. I got to be a millionaire because I got to double diamond in Jeunesse and it feels fantastic. I live on this beautiful house in Noosa. Every day I wake up, walk outside, jump in my pool and think about how lucky I am. I can see. So you say it as if you're living it already. You see, your subconscious does not know the difference between a truth and a lie. It cannot pick up the difference. So you want to read that out loud as if you've already got there. And it's quite inspiring. It's quite invigorating to read that out. So pick your, you know, five to 10 goals that you want to achieve this year, 12 months, five-year plan, and read them out as if you've already achieved them. I've even taken it a step further than that, and I've recorded myself on my iPhone reading those goals out with passion, with enthusiasm, like I meant it. And I listen listen to my own voice reading back those goals as if I've already achieved it, you know, while I'm working out, while I'm sleeping, where your subconscious is most powerful, um, all those sorts of different things, and you'd be amazed at how focused you get. It's incredible how the subconscious mind works. It just it just goes to work bringing about those things into your life. You know, whether that takes six months or 12 months or five years, it will happen. It keeps you on track. It keeps you focused. It might be the difference between you turning left and turning right. It could be the difference between you speaking to that person the taxi driver, the person on the bus, the person sitting next to on the plane or not talking to that person, which could turn your business completely upside down to on the road to diamond. So your subconscious is extremely important. So make sure they're written down. Make sure you read them out every single day and even go that next step further and record them so you can listen to them and get that subconscious really, really working. If you can't, you know, the first thing is to start with that vision with your goals because if you haven't got that vision, you're in trouble. So know where your end goal is first and have that stepping stone. You know, in Jeunesse goals, my very first goal was 
to write down that I'm going to need to be a jade. Okay, I need to enroll eight people and be a jade. Cross that off, have a little celebration. Next goal, enroll 12 people and be a pearl. Cross that off and have a little celebration. My next goal, need to be a sapphire. Cross that off, need to be a ruby, emerald, and diamond. So obviously, all of everyone's goals is to be a diamond and earn a million dollars a year in Jeunesse. But firstly, we need to become an executive and a jade and a pearl and a sapphire. So have small stepping stones towards your big goals so you can celebrate them, stay focused, and feel yourself at getting towards that end goal. Otherwise, you know, they become too far out. It becomes too big a step. You've got no celebrations in between, and people can get disheartened if they have a, a weak mindset. The next one, what time can I invest? This is extremely important. Firstly, get your person. So this is all 48 hours, right? So sit down and work out where my Jeunesse time is in between my kids, my social life, cooking, cleaning, things that I'll have to do at work, other businesses, all the other things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, where can I slot Jeunesse into? And don't just think, okay, I can put 10 hours a week into it. If you just think like that, you'll go a week and nothing's happened. Literally work out your Jeunesse time and write it in your diary, write it in your phone calendar, whatever works best for you, however you work off, and, and make sure you commit to that Jeunesse time. So if it's between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. every single day, Monday to Thursday, then make sure that's your Jeunesse time. If it's just between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. every night, Monday to Friday, make sure you do that. Maybe it's all day Saturday, all day Sunday. What you can't do is in your Jeunesse time that's scheduled in, you know, someone comes around to your house, so you end up spending time with them. Maybe a good program comes on TV, I'll watch that instead. Uh, I'm just going to Google, you know, beautiful houses in Noosa um, instead of doing my, that's not Jeunesse time, okay? Your Jeunesse time to be productive is picking up the phone and calling people, meeting people face-to-face, -face, showing them the Jeunesse platform, training your team and doing it all again. That is your structured, most productive Jeunesse time. If you can be consistent with it every single day, it's just a matter of time before you're successful in your nest business. Okay, so firstly, work out what time you can invest. Report that to your upline so that they know how to work with you. Get your downline to report that back to you. Because if they've told you that they want to make a million dollars a year in Jeunesse and they can put in four hours a week, those two equations just don't add up. You know, that's just not going to work. If they say that they can put in full-time hours, and make $500 a month, those two equations don't add up either because I'd be saying to them, well, I think you can do a little bit better than $500 a month full time. You know, let's go for that six figure income. So it's really important to match that up. 20 hours a week, I want to make 100 grand by the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that together. Now I know how to work with you. We need to do a fair bit. We need to be committed. We need to be speaking every single day. We need to be getting out there in the trenches. If someone says, look, I just want to do it part-time, got five hours a week, $500 a month to me would just be great alongside of what I'm doing. No problems. Beautiful. Now I know how to work with you. We don't need to be quite so intense. Let's get your list done, get a few people on board. It's going to happen for you pretty quickly. Okay, so make sure that you write that time into your diary and it's in sync with your goals and you stick to that every single day. And then we want to make sure we've got our list written down. Remember, we're still within our first 48 hours of the business here. You need to be doing this in your first 48 hours and you need to make sure your new people are doing this in their first 48 hours. Aim for 100 people, okay? Tell everyone in your downline to aim for 100 people because what will happen is they'll normally come back with probably 40 to 60 and that's fantastic. That's really what you want because if you tell them to come up with 30 names, they'll come up with five and if the first five people say no, they feel absolutely disillusioned, they've run out of contacts and they're chucking the towel. So tell people to come up with 100 names. Who's your accountant? Who's your personal trainer? Who's your next door neighbor? Who's your banker? Who's your plumber? You know, who did you go to school with that was entrepreneurial? Start doing those memory joggers for them. Okay, 100 people, they'll probably come back with you know 40 to 60 and then if the first five people say no, say no problems, we've still got 55 more people to contact. Get them to break it down into these categories. So you've got your huge list of 100 people. Now we want to highlight, you know, in a certain colored pen or however you want to do it, underline the entrepreneurial people that they know well in their warm market. They're the first people that you're going to go and speak with with your person because these people already know them 
they already trust them, hopefully they already like them, they're going to spend the time to listen to what this person and you as their upline and their mentor who can say it probably a little bit better, has better knowledge, and they're going to have an extremely high percentage chance of getting them into the business. Okay, do not go to warm market that are not entrepreneurial. So friends and family that you know well, but they haven't got an entrepreneurial bone in their body, I wouldn't even go to those people for a long time because what do our friends and family do? They all want what's best for us, don't they? Kind of. They love us. They don't want us to see us get hurt or rejected. Yeah, you know, they'll advise us to go and get a job and do something secure and don't get into that scam and you know, you know, just want what's best for you and they can start to bring you down. And all too often I see people listen to their mum and their dad and their older brother and, you know, you've got someone absolutely enthusiastic with 200 people on the list one day, going to be the next superstar, and then you never hear from them again. Why? Because they went and told their dad how excited they were about a network marketing opportunity. Their dad shot them down in flames and they never did anything with it again. So make sure you're protecting your people from, you know, these king hits that are going to come from behind. Make sure you tell them, you know, John, this will be a bipolar business. You are going to have good days, bad days, good days, bad days. If we're still here in three years' time having a conversation, you're going to be financially free. It's whoever hangs in there for that three to five year old, that three to five period. Okay. And, you know, if they don't expect these things to happen, then they've got a bigger chance of quitting, you know, very, very quickly. So if they don't know that someone's going to say no to them, you know, they didn't see that big left hook coming. But if they know that, yeah, someone's probably going to laugh at you one day, someone is going to say no, someone is going to join and then let you down and quit, these things are all going to happen. Please expect them, okay? Because that way they see the left hook coming, they can duck underneath it and keep on moving forward. You've got to give them the expectations that, yeah, look, the business can be extremely lucrative. You can set yourself up financially for the rest of your life with residual income, but... This is what you're going to have to go through to get it, okay? And often, you know, it's not advisable to go to your friends and family first because they're going to try and bring you down because of jealousy, skepticism, they're not entrepreneurial, all those different sorts of things. So only go to your warm market if you know they're entrepreneurial. Your next group of people, highlight entrepreneurs, but maybe you don't know them that well. Maybe they're more acquaintances or maybe they're just on Facebook, but they're entrepreneurial people. We're going to go to them next. You're going to have a little bit of a lower percentage chance of recruiting them, but, you know, if they're entrepreneurs, they're going to be open to having a listen. Your next group of people, again, in your warm market that you know, you've got their phone numbers, but, you know, they're not overly entrepreneurial. We never really spoke to them about making money, but they're leaders in the community or they're popular people, you know, people that everyone just loves to be around, you know, and you know that if they saw something in Jeunesse, everyone would listen to them and want to join with them. That's your next group of people. Your next group of people after that are really, you know, that can be cold or warm, it doesn't matter, maybe salon owners, hairdressers, people like that you think could benefit from having, you know, the product in their business. After that is everybody else. You know, everyone else after that is just hit and miss. Customers, people you know that may be entrepreneurial, may not be. And, and so it really comes down to the entrepreneurial people you know, the entrepreneurial people you kind of know, and then you know, your leaders in the community. Start with those contacts. You're going to get people on board. They're going to have a positive experience in their first week, and they've got a great chance of you know going on to, to build a huge organization. And then you can go back to your family when you're making 50 grand a month and say, you might want to take a look at this. But certainly with me, with my family and my friends, I didn't speak to any of my family or friends at all except for my brother who I knew was entrepreneurial and I just made all of my family go on the nutritional products because I love and care about them. Of course, I want them to be healthy and live for a long time and have the highest percentage chance of not getting those lifestyle diseases, you know, which are absolutely crippling. And so when people say, look, I don't want to talk to my friends and family about it, I say, are you absolutely crazy? You know, what if we had a network marketing product that guaranteed you would never get cancer? Would you go and share that with your mum and dad? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, there's no difference here. We have some amazing products that um, are going to help to benefit your family health-wise. There's no guarantees, but these are the closest things to the fountain of youth that we've got that science can back up. Of course, you're going to tell your friends and family about it. So maybe that's more people you go to as a customer, but don't go to them with the business in the beginning unless they're entrepreneurial. That's a huge uh, tip for you guys. Okay, become a product of the product. Pretty hard to believe in something 
if you haven't tried it for yourself. Pretty hard to promote it. You don't love it. And it's also pretty hard to get other people to buy into what you're doing if they ask you questions like, oh, fantastic. So what does a serum feel like? Does it smell of anything in particular? And you turn around and say, I don't know. I don't use any of the products. Bang, you've just lost them straight away. So first things first, buy a product pack, 30-day money-back guarantee. You have no risk. Try the product out. Become a product of the product, believe in it, love it, use it every single month, refer it on to other people, okay? Because if you're just driven by the business side of things and the money, people are going to see straight through that. You know, again, it's almost like a subconscious wavelength that's talking to them. They're saying, I can tell this person doesn't know about the product or believe in it, okay? Using the product adds to your story. So maybe you've had a great result with the nutritionals or the skincare or you know someone that has and the stories that you tell are the things that people buy into, okay? You can end up being a walking billboard. And again, remember, none will buy into you. No one's going to buy into your Jeunesse business or your products unless you are using them yourself. Learn the compensation plan and learn your back office systems, okay? Again, now we're into the 30-day stuff, all right? So you're not going to learn the compensation plan in 48 hours, but over the 30 days, our compensation plan is so simple yet so lucrative. Show someone the compensation plan, the six ways to earn income, how to become a Jade Pearl Sapphire Ruby, explain it all to them, uh, and then sit down one-on-one. -on -one. By the time they've done that, they're going to understand 90% of it. Once you enroll two or three people and you understand how it all works and you're earning money, you understand 100% of it. Okay, but you need to learn that compensation plan because if you're speaking to a smart business person, if you're speaking to another network marketer and they say, look, it all sounds great. These products sound incredible. It's ground floor. It's global. Great. Is it a binary plan or a, or a uni level plan? And you say, oh, what's a uni level plan? Or if they ask you, great, what's the matching bonus in your compensation plan? So I want to kind of compare it to my old one. Uh, I don't know what a matching bonus is. Straight away, you've lost that person because what they're now thinking is this sounds like a great opportunity, but this person doesn't sound like a very good person to join with. Maybe I'll just go and Google Jeunesse and join with someone else that knows their stuff because as we show you at the end of this presentation, if you want to really simplify how to be successful in network marketing, it comes down to two linear graphs of desire and knowledge. You need to get your knowledge up to a 10 out of 10 if you want to become a diamond millionaire earner in Jeunesse. Okay, you need to get your knowledge up and these things, the things you must eventually know. You need to learn how to sign up customers and distributors. You need to choose left or right. So you're going to put this person in the left team or the right team. Why am I putting that person in the left team and not the right team? You need to make sure that when you enroll people, you're doing it to maximize your repayments, both short term and long term. And that's a, you know, again, if you do the first 10, you know, with me or with your upline, you'll know why you're putting them left to right and how to do that through your back office. Learn how to check your commissions. There's nothing more fun than that. My favorite activity every single day, and you ask Craig Schultz, if you see him on, if you see Craig Schultz on his phone, I'll guarantee you he's either checking his commissions or he's checking his cycles. And you'll see him do that 50 times per day. And it's great when you build up, you know, that, that huge organization where you can literally refresh your Jeunesse website, you know, every single few minutes and you've done another cycle and made another commission. But you need to be able to check that. It's also extremely important to know how, many, how to check your cycles on a monthly basis because especially once you're gearing up towards Ruby because you could be doing 150, 160, 190 cycles a month. If you don't know that, then you, maybe you could have pushed a bit harder for that last week and got over to 200 cycles. As we know, 200 cycles will get you to Ruby. You know, you get a fourth level matching bonus, a minimum of $120,000 a year in residual income. And so you need to be checking your cycles. Before you get to Ruby, it's also great to be able to see, okay, I'm a pearl and I did seven, seven cycles this month. Okay, I did 20 cycles this month. I did 40 cycles this month. Now I'm a sapphire and I did 90 cycles this month. You know, so it's good to be able to track your cycles so you can see the growth in your business because whatever gets measured gets improved. So keep that as a bit of a stepping stone and a, and a measuring gauge for how your business is growing. Okay, learn where your training and learning and marketing tools are under the members only area. Learn to track your genealogy so you can check out, is this person qualified, are they left or right? You know, track your business. Learn how to change your auto ship. Learn how to use J Social and J Builder and those sorts of things. 
Okay, create your script and your story. Okay, now you want to have an elevator pitch, which is really a maximum of 30 seconds. So if someone says, hey, hey mate, how are you doing? What do you do with yourself? You're not going to go into this big, huge spiel and, and you know, the, the 60 minute PowerPoint presentation. If you're in a lift with someone and you're going from ground floor to floor three, by the time you've got through the first slide of, you know, your story, you know, they're in the back corner of the lift trying to get away from you and ducking out the door. So an elevator pitch has got to be something catchy, curious, sexy, that sums up what you do really quickly um, and then putting it back onto that person saying, you know, what do you do? So it might be something along the lines of, you know, hi, Aaron, uh, you know, what, what do you do with yourself? And I might say something like, um, what I do is I help people all around the world make money. You know how the economy is really bad at the moment? You know how retail suffering and old school business is really struggling? They'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I teach people a new way. I teach people the new age of business from home, low overheads in front of their computer with a global business, no overheads. And I teach them how to build residual income. And I do that through my Jeunesse business, which we just bought over from the US um, with you know, the stem cell technology. Do you know anyone in, in traditional business or any entrepreneurs that you know might be looking for a, a better way or looking for the new age of business? Uh, if you do, I'm your man. Uh, look, here's my business card. Please put those people in front of me. Have you got a number that I can call? And if you say something along those lines, you know, that's taken, what, 15, 20 seconds. If they're entrepreneurial, number one, they're going to be extremely interested in that. I help people all around the world make money, new age business. They're going to be going, hey, Tell me more about that. Okay, let's swap cards. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Or, you know what? I do know a, a mate of mine had a coffee shop. He's been struggling. Um, look, let's swap cards. Call me tomorrow. I'll give you his number and give him a call. Elevator pitch can work really, really well. But if you don't write it down and rehearse it and know it off by heart, it's not. otherwise you're just going to stammer and stutter and say, what shall I say to this person? You know, but there's no wrong or right answer for an elevator pitch. You might just say, I'm a network marketer. What do you do? You know, and they, you know, they might be interested in something like that. I'm a network marketer, help people make residual income. Um, there's so many different things you can use along those guys. Um, so have your elevator pitch. Then also have, you know, a, a sort of a two-minute version as well, a two-minute testimonial that you can use at a live event um, or on the phone with somebody and just practice it and practice it and practice it. That's the best way for you to get your scripts down packed, for you to get your story down packed. And talk about yourself and your vision for it. That's one of the biggest things. If you don't have a great story, you know, borrow somebody else's. Every single objection that I get in Jeunesse, the way that I answer it is by telling stories. You know, I'll tell Lyndon's story, Tracy's story, Angela's story, Craig's story, anyone's story, because there's always something that you can relate back to that person. So that's really important to have your story down packed. Okay, tell people about your, your product and business testimonial. Your vision for the future is hugely important. I tell people, look, this is what I was doing in the gym game. I needed a better way. I want a residual income. I found network marketing. I couldn't resist Jeunesse. And this is where I'm going to be living, in this house here in Noosa in 12 months' time. And they go, oh, wow, Noosa is a beautiful place. They buy into my vision and they go, right, where do I sign? I'm coming along that journey with you. And they go, oh, by the way, what's the company? What's the product? Understand that the product, the opportunity, Jeunesse, the compensation plan is all secondary to you, to you and your story and your vision and your enthusiasm. Okay, people always join you first, well and beyond joining Jeunesse. You know, the rest is, you know, by the way, we have a great stem cell product and here's how it all works. Okay, so make sure you've got your story and your scripts down packed and learn as many other people's stories as you can. You do that by going to live events. Okay, so next one, the secret of communication. Just an important step to understand. You know, 8% of what you say is going to matter. Okay, most of it is your body language and how you say it. Okay, so the expressions on your face, the tone in your voice, the body language. If you are sitting across from someone and you say, hey, got this great opportunity for you. Thanks for taking the time today. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And then you just turn to your phone and start texting, start Facebooking for your next meeting going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, that's great. That person is never, ever going to join you. They're probably going to cut the meeting short because people don't really care what you know until you know that they care. Okay, so make sure that you are engaged in those people. And we, we had a great webinar on Sunday night 
um, where you know Ben recommended reading How to Win Friends and Influence People, a great book I read you know probably ten years ago now, and you can relate it to anything. If you read that book, understand and put those principles in place, you can pretty ha- much have whatever you want in life. Okay, so it's great for maybe if you're single and you want to attract, you know, the opposite sex, it's great for that. If you're in business and you want people to, you know, buy your product or buy into you, fantastic for that. Great for any business, great for jumping up the career ladder in your job. It's an awesome book of understanding just the simple common set principles. A lot of people don't do these days. Be in the moment when someone's talking to you. So make that person feel like they are the most important person in the universe at that particular time. So if they're talking to you, have the eye contact. Don't be darting around all around the room looking for someone more important. You know, people pick up on that stuff. So be in the moment, compliment, listen to them, show them that you care more about them than you know talking about yourself. And you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Okay, and that's why the words that you say are only such a small percentage. We did a great case study on that in a, in a cafe, me and Rob May, last week. Uh, I got Rob to ring a real estate agent in Melbourne and he got the message bank. And I said, look, all you need to say to a real estate agent is I'm an entrepreneur from Sydney. Can you please give me a call back? My name's Rob May. Here's my phone number. And a real estate agent is always calling back an entrepreneur from Sydney because he thinks they want to invest in a property of some sort. Okay, but what Rob did was he started doing almost a 60-minute PowerPoint presentation to his message bank. And I'm sitting across the table, you know, waving my hand at my throat saying, cut this, cut it off, cut it off. And so Rob blubbered something into the, the message bank and um, gave his phone number. And he got, oh, God, I stuffed that up. And I said, that's all right, mate. You know, if he's the right person, it won't matter. And about an hour later, this real estate agent rang back and said, look, mate, I couldn't really understand what you were saying on my message bank. I just picked up your phone number. You know, what, what were you talking about? What's this all about? And Rob just told him a little bit about the Genesta. He said, look, I'm always open to new business opportunities. The timing's right for me. You know, what do you got? Let's catch up. So you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time in their life. So it's all about enthusiasm, body language, and more importantly, just getting on the phone and saying something to someone. The next step, guys, is making sure you can handle objections. Okay, this is not training you're going to get straight away here tonight on how to answer all these. But again, remembering you want to give your downline, you know, the opportunity to duck under that left hook to know these things are going to come. So this is why this training is really important. Tell them that someone at some stage is going to give you, I don't have time. I don't like to sell. I don't have much money. The products are too expensive. I don't like pyramid selling. I've tried network marketing unsuccessfully before. One of my friends was in network marketing, didn't do any good. You know, stem cells are controversial. All these different objections they're going to come up with. Understand this, guys. Human beings talk in code language. If you can decipher that code language, you are going to go really well with network marketing. Every single human being on this planet has 24 hours in one day. So every single person has time to build a Jeunesse business. I'm not saying that everyone's going to do it full time or the same amount of hours. People will do in their daily lives exactly what they want to do based on their priority list. So if their job is the most important thing in their life, they're always going to put that first. If keeping healthy and fit is extremely important to them, they're obsessed with it, they'll always find time to go to the gym. I'll give you the perfect example of that. I had a a six-month period where I I basically didn't do any workouts. I I got fat and (laughs) didn't eat well uh, because when I started building Jeunesse, that was a huge priority for me. And when I was working out, I just felt like I could be making another 100 phone calls. And so I just didn't do any workouts. And then all of a sudden, I had a tropical holiday booked. And I'm thinking, I can't walk along the beach looking like this. It's amazing how I found two hours a day to work out for the 30 days leading up to that holiday. Because why? I didn't, I didn't just invent two hours. I didn't just have a 26-hour day. I elevated exercise to a priority list into my top three or top five priorities for, for a reason, for a new motivation. So I understand if, if your priorities are socializing and shopping and family and gym and work, you will always do those five or six things first. You'll always find time for that. All of a sudden, you don't have time for Jeunesse. But if your financial future for you and your family, residual income, building your wealth, if having the lifestyle that you deserve, if living life on your terms becomes a priority in your top three, you'll be amazed at how you'll find time. 
you'll sleep six hours a night instead of 10 hours a night. You won't watch television. You won't do as much socialising. When you say yes to something, you must say no to something else. You must make sacrifices if you want this to work. And I'm speaking to you guys as if you want to earn full-time life-changing income. That's what I'm presuming. If you don't, that's okay. Keep watching TV. It's not going to matter that much. Okay, but you need to understand how to handle how to handle these objections. And so one of the best ways to do it is with storytelling, you know. And so someone says, I don't have time. I'll say, look, I know exactly how you feel. When I first started in the network marketing industry, I was still working in my gyms. I was working from 5 o'clock in the morning through till 9 o'clock at night. So I had to build my network marketing business from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. every single night. And I could only have limited time because people wouldn't take my calls at midnight. And so I sent off a few emails, made a few phone calls, and you know, a few people joined. And then a few more people joined. Then a few people joined them. And it just slowly started to grow where eventually I was able to take you know a day off of my gym per week. And then I was able to take two days off and then three days off, etc. And so I know exactly how you feel about that. Um, you don't need a lot of time to build your So I can show you ways that we can do that. I don't like to sell. I know exactly how you feel. I hate selling. I couldn't sell, you know. And if you try and sell in this industry, you're going to struggle because it's not about selling. It's about providing information. And the people that try and sell are going to do the worst in this business because you're not showing that person you actually care about their goals and dreams. I don't have much money. You know what one of the best ways to answer that is? Well, then you need Jeunesse more than anybody I know, you know. Or say to them, how long have you had that problem for? I can show you. and I always say to people, look, I'm not here to show you how to spend money. You know, I do not make any money on you signing up. I'm here to show you how to make money, okay? And even if you make $1,000 a month, you've got no overheads, you know? So if you spend $100 a month on product, 1000 take 900 you know, that's still $900 profit. That's good maths in my book. You know, so not having much money, that is not an excuse at all. Famous story about an 18-year-old kid got involved in network marketing. He said... I don't have much money. Love to join you, but I just don't have the money. This guy turned around and said to him, what about if I offered you my house in Melbourne for $500? Would you go and find that $500 to buy my house? And the 18-year-old kid said, absolutely, I'd find that $500. I know that house is worth at least $500,000. I'd make a lot of money. And the guy said, well, you're telling me that a short, short, version of making that money where you can make a, a bit of money now is worth more to you than long-term residual income, long-term knowledge where you can make money in any company for the rest of your life. So all you've done is prioritized, you know, how you know you can make money. If I could show you a way with network marketing to guarantee you to make that same amount of money as you'd make with buying my house and selling my house, you could do that every single year residually. You know, would you then go and find that $500 to join my network marketing company? And he said, well, you know, when you put it like that, yeah, I would. And long story short, this kid took that quite literally and to his credit, <laughs> what he did was he actually put the $500 on his mum's credit card, which he remembered he had in his pocket because his mum made him put petrol in the car that day. And he figured, look, I'll make that $500 back in my first month, put it on the credit card before it cuts, she won't even know. And unfortunately, the credit card company rang his mum that day and said, have you authorised this $500 to this product overseas? And, and his mum grounded him for, you know, a month. But the great thing is this young kid went on to make that $500, give it back to his mum, and he went on to be one of the most successful network marketers in our industry. He's a multimillionaire today. And so, you know, it's fantastic that the guy that was speaking with him was able to put it in that way. You know, he was able to overcome the objection because if he let that guy to say, I don't have money, okay, fair enough, no worries, see you later, you know, thanks for coming, he may never have spoken to that kid again. That kid may have never got into network marketing. And so these are not reasons for people to not join your business, okay? They're just talking in code. Now, it might be that they're just testing you with these objections to so make sure you're the right leader that has the answers and then they're going to join up. It could mean that they're just not the right person, have a terrible mindset. As long as you can answer the objections, then you give your chance, the person the chance of joining your business and you continuing on. Okay, being accountable. We talk about this one. So whether it's your upline, whether it's your life partner, whether it's your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your, you know, someone else in Gen S, it's great to have an accountability partner because it's very lonely doing this business by yourself. Just like going to the gym by yourself, you're not going to get the results you should. Just like in Gen S, if you don't have someone to keep accountable to, 
you're not going to get the results that you would get. So work out who your accountability partner is and do that one within the first 48 hours as well. Get them to report back to you uh, or make sure you're reporting that back to your upline as well. The next one is about learning about the industry and develop yourself personally every single day. So personal development, uh, network marketing knowledge. If you want to go from a, a 5 or 6 out of 10 uh, in knowledge to a 10 out of 10, one of the areas you need to be knowledgeable about is the industry as a whole. So what's the history of network marketing? Learn about other companies. You know, what companies are doing well at the moment? What companies are coming to Australia? Who are the other leaders in the network marketing industry? What are some of the other compensation plans other companies have? What are some of the other products? You know, understanding the industry will take you from a 5 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 where no matter what question somebody else may have in another network marketing company, you've got them covered. And that person is, if they're going to join anyone, they're joining you. You can start talking to business people, entrepreneurs, other network marketers with that much confidence that no one knows more about the industry, no one knows more about Jeunesse than you do. Some great audios, CDs and books to listen to. And again, remember guys, I, I did this you know, test with people all around Australia on this particular slide, people that have been in the business for one year and they still hadn't read or listened to one single one of these items. And I guarantee you it will change your whole perception on the industry and how to be successful in network marketing. You can listen to me all day long. You can listen to your upline all day long. But when you read it in these books and listen to it in these audios, it goes straight into your subconscious mind and it puts it in a different way. It really does make a difference. So, you know, your first year in network marketing is an absolute must read. That's the book that tells you to expect those left hooks, to tell your downline about them so you can duck under them, continue on. It tells you what to expect. It's got some great stories about stay-at-home mums making 50000 a month, about guys that were making you know no money for three years and were homeless and all of a sudden made millions of dollars. It's just a great real-life, real accountable case study book on the industry. It's fantastic to read. I'd make sure you read it and give it all to all your new people to read as well. Seven Steps to Seven Figures, Seven Secrets to Seven Figures with Matt Morris. Go to mattmorris.com, download it for free. That's an absolutely cracking audio on how Matt Morris, you know, was able to make millions of dollars in the network marketing industry despite his upbringing, despite the odds. Four-year career, absolutely fantastic. Brilliant Compensation is an audio and a DVD that can get an entrepreneur or a business owner that may be skeptical about network marketing, get them to listen to that. And they'll be ringing you the next day saying, where do I sign? Magnetic sponsoring is a great one about attraction marketing, having people come to you instead of you going to people. Uh, Success in, stems, in 10 Steps, a great book by Michael DeLuli. Think and Grow Rich is not a network marketing specific book, but principles that you can apply in that book, you can apply to everyday life, especially network marketing. Guys, Google them. Go to Amazon, buy them, read them, listen to them. Again, that is not an optional slide. That's a must do. Yeah, there's lots of other books and audios out there, but grab those ones to start with. Okay, next step, purchase and organize your business building tools. Okay, sign up for J World. At the moment, I would say that one would be optional. You know, when Jay Builder and uh, Jay Social are there, you, mu you must do that. That's going to be one of the most powerful ways to build your business. Business cards, you know, it, statistics not in the network marketing world but in all business proves that people will stay in a business three times longer if they have a business card why they just feel important they feel like they're in business okay if you don't have business cards it's just one area where they don't really feel like they've got a real life business they feel like they've got a hobby you know or a little home business so grab business cards and encourage your guys to grab business cards Brochures, before and after pictures are a fantastic tool to, uh, tool to carry around, especially if they're your own. Uh, put them on your phone or your iPad. CDs, DVDs, sign-up forms, memory stick, mobile phone, internet computer. Very hard to build a business without those things. Okay, the next one's probably the most important step out of everything if you're wanting to make full-time income. Plan and attend live events. The reason I say plan and attend is Every single event that we have on Ingenious for the rest of the year is up on our Facebook page, Ingenious Global South Pacific. Go to that page, like it, click on the events page and put in your diary for the rest of the year all the events that you're going to attend. There's no reason for not attending an event ever if you're serious about the business. All you've got to do is plan ahead. Understand people have got 
um, families and kids and business and Christmas parties and all these sorts of things. But again, remember, if Jeunesse is a priority and you plan ahead, you'll always be able to, um, you know, get organise a babysitter, um, change dates with someone, those sorts of things to attend live events. What I say to people in each capital city is as long as you're attending one a month, you know, that that's okay because maybe in the beginning if you're part-time and you've got limited hours, it might be hard to drive two hours across town in peak hour traffic to go to that event across the other side of town. So pick a local meeting the closest to you. Make sure you're going to it, but not only going to it, make the most out of it. So bring new prospects along to live events because they are the number one reason that someone will get started in Genesis. They are the highest converting way that someone's going to join your business at live events. You need to attend live events to build your business from that statistic, but also too, everyone needs their monthly inspiration, their monthly motivation. You'll always learn something new at these events. You'll always meet somebody new great networking, and you'll go away feeling positive and ready to build your business again. And also, too, if you're looking to be a leader that's going to get up on stage and present, you know, you can't not go to events or not attend live webinars until you're capable of doing those presentations. So you might think, oh, look, I've heard Jay School a million times. I know it back to front. I know the opportunity event. I know it back to front. But until you can present it and say all those big words about telomeres and and DNA repair and all those sorts of things, then you need to be at that live event, okay? So make sure you plan them out. And if you want to be a leader, you've got to be at every single one because if you take your new people along to an event and you've got 10 people there, it's it's just not as exciting for that new person. They're thinking, this can't be that great. There's only 10 people involved. But if all the leaders come along to that event and all of a sudden you've got 30 people in that event, whether you'll bring someone or not, then those three people that another person brought are all going to join because I think, wow, this is this is a great group of people. There's 30, 40, 50, 60 people here. I'm definitely joining. And then when it comes your turn to bring somebody, all the leaders are going to back you up and support you because you know they're going to turn up and create that huge atmosphere, that team building, that bonding that's going to be duplicated for you know decades to come. So if you want to earn money, if you want to be a leader, go to plan live events. It builds belief, momentum, relationship, uh, the motivation injection, third-party edification. Have you ever had that thing where you told your best mate about a business opportunity and they just don't listen to you? You take them to a live event with a different speaker, all of a sudden they're that excited they can't wait to join. It's that third-party edification. Okay, next step, guys, is just start inviting. Okay, so get inviting. It doesn't say start presenting. You can build a six-figure income in Jeunesse, never done a presentation ever. Okay, you've got a webinar every single Monday night. You've got a live event in your city now just about every single week, no matter where you live. So if you just get good at inviting, you know, hi, Rob, it's Aaron here. Look, yeah, you, what are you doing Monday night? Oh, I've got no plans. Look, you have to come along to this event. I'll pick you up. Um, you're just sitting making some money. We always talk about it. You've got to see this entrepreneur, this business opportunity. It's going to be awesome. You know, we'll catch up for dinner first. And they're probably going to say, what's it all about? Literally, trust me, don't worry about it. You have to be there. I'll pick you up at 6.30. It's going to be huge. Away we go. You haven't done any presentation. You haven't told them anything. You're just getting good at inviting. Okay, get good at inviting to the webinar. So, yeah, you're going to copy and paste and send a link to somebody. But if you follow that up with a phone call, you know, as well, you've got 10 times more chance of that person registering for the webinar and getting on that webinar. Get good at inviting. Three-way phone calls, live events, webinars, face-to-face -face meetings. Provide great service. You know, that goes without saying with any business. So you're going to have prospects that are looking to join. You're going to have customers. You're going to have distributors. And you're going to have people that are looking to make millions of dollars in Jeunesse. Provide great service to all of them. Follow up. How's the products going? Follow up your distributors. You know, who you want to do a three-way call today? Follow up your leaders and say, right, you know, it's time you got the Sapphire. I believe in you. What can I do to help you? Provide great service. Always call your team back. If you can't answer the phone for whatever reason, Make sure you always call them back as soon as you can and then they'll start to trust you. They'll start to use you. They'll start to feel comfortable they've got support in your business. Provide great service. Next step, become a leader. Okay, Becoming a leader is not being Tony Robbins up on stage. It's not being the captain of the football team. It's not being the prime minister of the country. Becoming a leader is as simple as getting on this webinar tonight. That's, that's leadership. You guys could be doing anything else right now, but you're on this webinar. That is leadership. 
okay? It's about increasing your knowledge. So listening to brilliant compensation, reading your first year in network marketing is leadership because your knowledge is going up. You're leading from the front. So if you do that, your downline will do that. Being a leader is enrolling people every single week, every single month. You can say nothing. So remember, you've got a lot of uh, football captains that, that talk a lot and they're motivational speakers. They're great leaders. But you also have captains of sporting teams that do absolutely no talking, but they're the best player on the team. They're the most courageous. They lead from the front by doing. Your team will always do what you do. They won't ever do what you say. So you need to lead from the front, and that's just by setting the example. So it's very easy to go from a 1 out of 10 as a leader to a 10 out of 10. Now, if you're a one or two as a leader, you are going to attract other ones and twos into your business. Ones and twos are never going to get to sapphire, ruby, diamond. Okay, but if you become an eight, a nine, a 10 out of 10 as a leader, you are going to attract other nines and tens into your business who are all going to become rubies and diamonds and you're going to be set for life. So make a conscious decision to improve your leadership. Yeah, and that might be just, you know, maybe it's doing a public speaking course. Maybe it's just increasing your knowledge. Maybe it's just enrolling more people. Maybe it's getting to that next title. Maybe it's getting to an event early and setting up the chairs, setting up the banners, showing that you're a leader and you're helping to organize and be part of the organization. And that is literally it, guys. They are the 15 points you need to tick off. So the people that have been in the business for a while, how did you go? Did you get 15 out of 15? Are there areas that you need to work on? Can you replicate those 15 points and teach that to your team? There's nothing there that takes rocket science or anything hugely knowledgeable. It's just common sense stuff to learn and do. Okay, nothing that is hard work. The hard work comes in dealing with human beings <laughs> because they, uh, we will let each other down too much. If everyone just said yes to Jeunesse and then every one of their people just said yes and we did all those 15 points, every single person in the world would be doing network marketing, would all be multimillionaires. But then, you know, who would serve us drinks at the cafe? Who would wash our car? Network marketing is not for everybody. If it was that easy, everyone would be doing it, all right? Just like nursing is not for everyone, just like, you know, being a – Clean is not for everyone, just like being a doctor is not for everyone. You know, it's not for everybody, but it can be for anybody. No knowledge required, no education, doesn't matter your background, your race, where you live, you can build the income that you want from anywhere with any background if you want to do it. So the equation is this, guys. If you want to uncomplicate everything and just remember this, this is a great visual. And it's also something great to draw out to your team as a training for them because they'll get it straight away. So the graph to be successful is left-hand side, you've got desire, okay? The right-hand side, you've got knowledge. Now, if you're a 10 out of 10 on desire, which I am presuming that everyone on this webinar on a Tuesday night has got desire, somewhere around 8, 9, 10 out of 10 in order to change their financial situation in order to make you know a big Jeunesse business. Now, if your knowledge, though, is only a 1 out of 10, then your ability to earn income is only that big, is only that small little triangle there from 1 up to 10. Okay, you're probably going to be able to get to Jade and that is all. Okay, but if you can become a 5 out of 10, you know, halfway down that knowledge curve, and you're a 10 out of 10 on desire, then you've got the half of that whole square there, the ability to earn life-changing income. You can get to, to Ruby, most likely. You know, Sapphire, Ruby with 5 out of 10 knowledge. A 5 out of 10 knowledge would be understanding all about the Jeunesse products and able to explain them, the compensation plan, the story about Jeunesse, who the owners are, all those sorts of things would get you to a 5 out of 10 in Jeunesse business. But then to become a 10 out of 10, you now want to understand the industry. You now want to be able to stand personality types, mindset, personal development, understanding how to overcome objections, how to train your team, what other companies are doing, understanding all those sorts of things. Now, your ability to earn income, put that into action, is that whole section there. You can now become an emerald, a diamond, a double diamond and make millions of dollars a year. Okay, but again, I know people that have got 10 out of 10 on knowledge 
they're the best students in the world, but their desire is lacking. They're a one out of 10 on desire. And again, your ability to earn income is only that small little rectangle down the bottom from one to 10. So it's a combination of desire, knowledge, and put it into action. And that's J School. That's what we teach in J School. And that's normally where we stop the presentation. So I'm recording tonight for a product and an ongoing training. And I want to run through everything. So these, these seven by seven by seven system is really just a summary of what we've been over. So if you wanted to do a 10 minute training with someone because you didn't have much time, you would do this seven by seven by seven. You would show them this graph and say, right, you need to get your knowledge as quickly as possible up to a five. A six, a seven, eight, nine, and a ten, the way that we're going to do that is there's seven things that you need to know. You need to know about the company. You need to know about the products. You need to know about the pay plan. You need to overcome objections and know how to train your team to overcome objections. You need to know about people. And we do a great training called Colors to Success. Most of you guys would have heard about different personality types. Some people call them names, colors, animals. We do the Colors to Success training to understand you know, all the different personalities, how they can all be great networkers, but how we need to change what we say to each individual person and personality type. So you need to know people and what makes them tick. You need to know where you are going. So if you don't know how to get to Ruby, if you don't know how to earn a six-figure income in Jeunesse, it's pretty hard to do it. It's like starting a new job. and You've got a base payment and a bonus structure, but you don't even know how to get to your bonus. You don't even know what your job is. Pretty hard to go and do it and get your bonuses. So you need to understand where you're going, understand the compensation plan, how to get to Ruby so you can start literally with the executive and then Jade and then Pearl and then Sapphire and then Ruby. You need to know how to get there. You need to know how to then teach and duplicate that using the system. They're your seven must-knows. The seven must-dos, okay, summarising what we went through in the 15 points. Again, your list of dreams, your mindset, personal development, the time you can put in, your goals, your vision board. So it's all about personal development. You must do personal development and increase that knowledge, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Okay, make sure you've got your list of names and you're always adding to that list as well. Going to new networking events, finding people on Facebook, adding to your list. Get good at inviting. You must attend live events Organize the three-way calls, invite people to the webinars face-to-face. -face. Okay, you must eventually be able to do some presentations. Maybe it's just face-to-face -face at a cafe. Okay, on your laptop, on your flip chart, on your iPad, um, you know, or take your upline with you to get those presentations done. You must follow up. I've had that many conversations with people today about, okay, we've got a new meeting back in your place this month. What happened to that person? What happened to that person? What happened to that person? Oh, I'm not sure. I haven't followed them up. I haven't rang them yet. Yeah, not sure. I thought one of my team was doing that. Okay. And so the money's in the follow-up. Okay. Not Live events, a lot of people will join on the spot. Three-way calls, not so much. Webinar, you've got to follow people up after the webinar. Okay. Some of the webinars finish at 10 o'clock at night. Follow them up the next day. They're going to be ready to join. A lot of people are just waiting for your phone call. They're busy. You need to get on the front foot, follow up. The only time you stop following up is when that person says, no, this is not for me. It never will be. Leave me alone. No worries. You still follow them up in a month's time. But until they say no, if they're busy, all the excuses, handle the objection, follow up. If it's not for them right now, do a monthly follow up. That is key. Okay, you must pick up the phone. Okay, there is no way you're going to build this business if you don't pick up the phone. Even if you're a fantastic internet marketer, social media marketer, you still need to pick up the phone once you've generated those leads to form that relationship, build the trust, train them, and duplicate yourself. Okay, there's no question or problem that can't be solved by picking up the phone to your upline, your downline, uh, three-way calls. Make the phone your friend, okay, and then train, okay? Be part of the team. Okay, be part of the team upline and be part of the team downline and duplicate your business. They're the seven must-dos. Seven must-activities. Okay, you don't want to let a day go past if you have not spoken to someone about the Jeunesse opportunity. Remember, I'm presuming that you guys want to make diamond income. If you don't, 
you can let a month go past and not talk to anyone. It doesn't matter, right? But if you want to make that diamond income, don't let a day go past without, you know, one guy took that literally and he literally spoke to three people every single day of his life about Jeunesse. He would even be home at 11 o'clock at night and go, oh, geez, you know what? I'm in my pyjamas. I only spoke to two people today. He would go put his shoes back on. He would go out on the street. He would not come back until he'd spoken to one more person about Jeunesse. Needless to say, earning truckloads of money in Jeunesse. Don't get a week go past where you haven't presented the opportunity to someone. So if you've let a week go past and you haven't done a three-way call, you didn't have anyone on the webinar, you didn't have anyone at the live event, and you haven't done a face-to-face -face presentation, your business is going backwards. It is crawling along at a snail's pace. Monthly, okay, if you haven't enrolled someone monthly, again, your business is not growing. You're not getting there anytime soon. So daily talk to people, weekly present, monthly sign up. Of course, you're going to be attending the live events, the training, uh, checking your titles, checking your cycles, those sorts of things. Every quarter, it's great to review your goals, review your list, review your strategy, have a quarterly, really in-depth conversation with your upline and say, am I on the right target? What more can I do? Okay, yearly, attend the Australian event. So, yeah, this year it's in Melbourne, 23rd, 24th of August. Again, diamonds have to be there. Don't want to be a diamond? Doesn't matter. International conference, you know, that's for the really serious people. Um, and take your team. That just supercharges your business. Your business just goes on absolute autopilot, um, just booms from going to an international convention, especially if you bring your team with you. And, you know, you must become that leader, um, develop that leadership. Most importantly, though, never give up. Again, as I said, if we're running one of these webinars again in three years' time and you're still on it, um, I guarantee you're making money. You know, for all, the, the chances are or the percentages, you know, of people that will be on this webinar again in three years' time are low. I can guarantee you there will be people on this webinar tonight that will make millions of dollars in Jeunesse. I absolutely guarantee you right now. I also guarantee you that there's people on this webinar tonight that won't be building this business in three months' time. It just depends on how much you want it, how hungry you are. And look, I hope that everybody does, but it's just statistics saying this. So really quickly, guys, Roadmap to Ruby. So the reason I call it Roadmap to Ruby because it kind of sounds cool. That's about all. Two R's in it, Road and Ruby. But really, it's Roadmap to Ruby because at Ruby, mathematically, you cannot earn anything less than $120,000 per annum residual income. You can't earn anything less than that. Okay, so people that want full-time income, People that want a six-figure residual, you've got to get to Ruby. I mean, you can earn that at Sapphire, but you're going to have to be one of the highest paid Sapphire. We've got people at Sapphire earning $50,000 a month, but that is the exception to the rule. You really need to get to Ruby. Okay, The reason we say that is because to get to Ruby, you need to be able to generate 200 cycles in one calendar month. Okay, If you do 200 cycles in a calendar month, times that by $35, you know, I think that's uh, seven, seven and a half thousand dollars. Add on your matching bonuses. You know, there's your ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars per month. Okay, so you cannot be not earning those matching bonuses if you have that much volume. You cannot not be earning you know seven and a half grand from the cycles. So you have to be earning you know ten, twelve thousand dollars a month, mathematically minimum, absolute minimum. And so really, the roadmap is, as we said, enroll one person on your left team. Enroll one person on your right team. You are now an executive, okay? Give your upline a high five, celebrate, cross it out and go, right, what is my next focus? Okay, my next focus is to enroll uh, either four executives, okay? So you can enroll four people that have one on the left and one on the right, or you can just enroll eight people flat, okay, and become a J. All right, once you've enrolled eight people, cross that off the lifts, high five, celebrate, go out to dinner, and then refocus. Okay, what's my next goal? My next goal is to become a pearl. The way that I become a pearl is I either enroll 12 people, okay, just go and enroll 12 people with a 100-point order, and I'm a pearl. Or you can enroll eight people that all have one on the left and one on the right. So either eight executives or just 12 people that do nothing, and then you're going to be a pearl. Cross that off. Okay, now we need to find 12 people that have one on the left and one on the right. 
Okay, and then we're going to be a sapphire. Important to note, you do need at least three people on one side. So maybe if you're a, a sapphire, you've got nine people on your left side that are all executives and three people on your right side. Okay, that equals 12 and you're going to be a qualified sapphire. Okay, making three levels of matching bonus, starting to really get into some good income now. Okay, now to become a ruby, we now need to have two people in our team that are sapphires. Okay, so we have already became a sapphire ourselves. We need to now have two people in our team that are sapphires and cycle 200 times in a calendar month. Okay, 200 times, $35. You can do the maths on that. It is a six-figure income, full-time income. The great thing about this as well now from when we first started in the business to now, it's around about 100 times easier to become a ruby, an emerald, and a diamond than it was when I first started. When I first started, you had to personally enroll two people to become, two sapphires to become a ruby. Now they don't need to be personally enrolled. So they can come through anyone in your team as long as it's a personal leg. So let's say I enroll John. John enrolls two people but does nothing. One of the people is called Sophie. Sophie enrolls two people but does nothing. One of Sophie's enrollments becomes a sapphire. That would count towards one of my two sapphires because it comes through my personal enrollment of John, Sophie, and then this person becomes sapphire. That counts towards my sapphire. Whereas before, that wouldn't have counted towards my sapphire to get me to Ruby. It would take me twice as long. You know, or even 10 times longer. So as long as they come through your personal business, they don't have to be personally enrolled. Two sapphires, cycle 200 times a month, you are a ruby. So that's it, guys. You know, you can always do a, a bit of a, a check on your business. You know, if you're going well, you've got 100% belief, confident, focused, you're always present, regular three-way calls, you're a problem solver, you always pin everything on yourself. So if things are going bad, you don't blame your downline, you don't blame the website, you don't blame the company, you don't blame the product. It always comes back to you. You know, you are the sole reason for everything happening. Take responsibility for everything and solve it. You know, do you have constant momentum? Do you focus on the business? Do you have a first great impression with people and do you inspire people? Okay, if you're struggling, you're going to have doubts, you're going to be timid, okay? You're going to be doing things that aren't productive like chatting on Facebook and checking your emails and you know, making a beautiful looking website. Sometimes you're at the live events. Okay, You never do three-way calls. Everything's a problem, so you get paralysis. Okay, You always think that if I get this one good person, they're going to make me into a millionaire. Um, it's always somebody else's fault. You, know, you want to pin success on yourself, Okay, not on other people. You also want to... Take the failures onto yourself and not other people as well. Take responsibility. Is your business stagnant? Are you just focusing on the product? You know, customers is pocket money. Business is big money. Okay, do you have an average first impression? You know, what are you wearing to your meetings? How's your first impression when you meet someone? Do you confuse your team or inspire your team? So, guys, that is J School. That is the roadmap to Ruby. Those are the things you must, 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 must do before you even start thinking about getting creative outside of the marketing and all those different sorts of things. I hope that's helped you guys. If you're new to the business, I hope it's helped you. If you've been in the business for a long time, get out of your comfort zone. That's where the magic happens. It's time for the magic to happen in your business. Okay, guys, have a fantastic night. Talk to you all soon. Bye.